I just spent 200 hours completing all of the achievements in Hypixel Skyblock. I just completed one of them, only 286 to go. Later on, I'll be doing some crazy challenges like defeating one of the hardest bosses out there or buying the best and the most expensive pet in the whole game. And I can only fail at completing 10 achievements or else... You have to give away 1 billion coins to have a subscribe in the next 7 days. But he didn't know I came prepared with a plan. I started with getting the achievements for exploring the hub, completing a trade and finding 20 parasols. I then went to the garden because some of the hardest achievements can only be unlocked there. But before I could do anything, the anniversary event began. All you had to do was go to the hub and find the Simon NPC who would give you a free sloth hat. Yo, I can hey, give you, you one meal for a free sloth hat. Two million. So much money. Like, my cloak. My Even though the hats were free, you could only redeem them once, making their price go up to millions on the auction house. But because the event was very new, the prices were rapidly changing. But all of this commotion gave me an idea. I would just go around and party any low-level person in the lobby and buy the hat for 3 million coins. This plan was a massive success and I was able to profit nearly 40 million coins, which I then immediately spent on farming XP boosters. One of the things I was going for in the garden were the achievements I would get every time I increased my farming level 5 times. To get all of those achievements I would need around 2 million farming XP and for reference harvesting a single crop gives you less than 10 farming XP. I needed all the help I could get okay? And also every 15 minutes you spend in the garden a visitor will appear looking to buy crops from you and I needed to trade with visitors 500 times. Fortunately instead of having to wait for 100 hours you can farm while waiting which will cut the down the time to only 40 hours. Yeah, only. Also completed achievements for getting a rare drop from farming, completing a quest for training with the legendary Bev Visitor 4 times, and even got the achievements for hitting level 25 in enchanting, taming and farming. And then I farmed for the next 30 hours. I had to farm so much that I got all the way up to farming level 40 to meet the requirements to wear the best farming armor in the game. But if you think that was hard, then later in the video I'll be doing even harder achievements. With the garden finally finished, I could sell all of the gear I had to prepare coins for the next hard achievement. In the meantime, I went after the easy ones, like getting a book with a tier 6 enchant or redeeming the free cake from the baker just to get them out of the way. They were so easy, I wanted to see how many achievements I can get in a single minute. Minute. Max out promising axe, kill a zombie, get horns free, get uh, combo 5 on the zombie sword, wear full monster hunter and kill with the vo voodoo doll ability. So I got 13 achievements done in one single minute. That's insane. But even after doing that, there were still so many left that I did that two times. 13 achievements in a single minute. Let's go. I finished the easy achievements by completely bug abusing to win a number of races to redeem the Cheeto talisman. And then it was time for another hard achievement. The first step was bribing Chris so I can get access to the dwarven mice. W Riz. That was so stupid. This allowed me to talk to the king. Or kings? But now I could complete commissions. You basically get tasked with going to a specific spot, mining a bit of mithril and coming back to get your rewards. But if I wanted to do 500 commissions, it would take me tens of hours. But luckily for me, all of the farming gear finally sold, giving me the money I needed to spend on mining gear. When I came back, I tried focusing on the commissions, but instead I kept hearing about some sort of weird cult. I've never seen any members myself. Not sure what's the point of the cult, uh, but it it worries me a bit. They sometimes show up nearby the fallen star at night, as far as I know. While waiting for more information, I kept up with doing commissions. This gave me a chance to talk to all of the eight kings, which gave me an achievement and a talisman. I'm so happy about this information. I also got achievements for reaching mining level 25 and giving tasty mithril to Don Expresso. You have issues, man. And in the goblin raid, I had to kill a total of 100 goblins. Easy. Doing all of that gave me enough information to find the meeting place of the cult, so I paid them a visit. You found us. Are you trying to stop us from doing our suspicious activities? You're the cult of the fallen star. Uh, to be honest, we just want to look cool. Oh, want to join us? Well... I guess I joined the cult now, but just a few commissions after that, this happened. Hard to want in free, I can finally do Crystal Hollows, let's go. And I got a lot of new achievements from that, like finding the fairy grotto, killing Corleone, or 
whatever this is. I just killed a child and got an achievement for it. And even more for melting to death in the magma fields and finding an extremely rare golden dragon room. I wonder if I will need to come back here. But while doing that, I made sure to take a break and visit Bednom. After three days of talking to him, he will give you a hint to find a chest full of treasures. They weren't worth anything, but at least I got an achievement for it. And then after days of grinding, I hit 250 commissions. I thought it would be a great idea to play without any breaks until I get the other 250 commissions. An hour in, I reached Heart of Mountain level 5, 2 hours in, I was smelling so bad that I got an achievement from just going into the water. So after 7 straight hours of doing commissions, and at 4am, I finally completed 500 commissions. But even that wasn't the hardest achievement I would have to do. But at least now I could take a I challenge you so that for the next 10 achievements, you can't use your aspect of the end. Well, that sucks. First I climbed to the top of the mountain in Spider Den and waited there until one of the hardest bosses in the game spawns. That was it? Next I visited the end and spent some time mining. Some of the blocks in the end can become shiny blocks at random. When mining them you can get anything from equipment pieces to endermites trying to kill you. And if you are really lucky you can even get a rare fish. Next I got a secret achievement for clicking a pot in the park for 15 minutes straight. Yep. It isn't usually a hard achievement, but you can spend 10 minutes clicking the pot, and if the server lacked at any point for even a second, you would have to start from the very beginning. But this wouldn't happen often, right? It happened 7 times. Well, at least after 2 hours, I finally got it. Then I did 2 achievements at once. One for upgrading an item to the mythical rarity, and the second one for using a recombobulator for the first time. Since I used a gemstone gauntlet, I also got another one for upgrading good with all five of the gemstones. Yay! For the last two, I got one achievement for claiming the ender chest upgrade from the community shop, and to get the last one, I bug abused once again. Normally to reach 500 speed, you need to use a rare pet that goes for tens of millions of coins. But instead, I asked a friend to set the speed on my rancher boots way past the normally allowed limit. Then I decided to go after the hardest achievement yet. The golden dragon is by far the best pet in the game, However, it isn't cheap. To even buy the egg of the golden dragon, you need 5 perfect gems, which cost 10 million coins each, 1.2 million gold ingots, and 500 million of raw coins. Getting all of that would take tens if not hundreds of hours, and I wanted to do it in only 5 days. My first plan was to make all that money with farming cactus, but I dropped a cactus knife worth more than 50 million coins straight into a cactus and lost it. So instead, I farmed nether wars. I was playing hours today and regularly going to sleep at 4am. The only thing that were keeping me going were apparently this. <laughs> and Hypixel admins checking up on me to see if I'm alright. So nice of them. And after farming 100 million nether wards, I finally got enough coins to buy the golden dragon. I quickly bought all the materials other than one perfect gemstone, since I forged one of them myself for the achievement. Okay, I have everything prepared. This is going to be the most expensive achievement ever. And here it is. This was... A lot of struck. <laughs> While waiting for the golden dragon to sell, I bought a tree capitator with an ability to cut down a whole tree at once every two seconds, a monkey pet to decrease that cooldown even lower, and an ocelot to increase my forging XP. The best way to get forging XP is by chopping the massive dark oak trees in the park, but since they take a long time to regrow, the space is only big enough for a single person. But it is very common for every lobby on the whole server to already have multiple people there. But since it was for the achievement, I had to do it. After I was done with forging, well that took like 5 hours, someone bought my golden dragon, which meant that I could use the money to speedrun achievements. First I got the easiest ones, like collecting 8 compost from the composter at once, buying an efficiency 6 golden pickaxe for 500,000 coins, checking a few dwarven mines lobbies to find the dark monolith or the hardest achievement of them all. 
yeah, I just had to write a command. Then I spent a few million on the growth armor and a wood singularity, which could upgrade any wooden sword in the game by a whole hundred strength. I had to put it on the war sword in the game. I spent 6 million coins on this. Next I spent 2 hours mining lapis to get enough collection to craft the titanic experience bottle. I could have used minions to do it for me, but I was already using redstone minions since I needed to unlock the greater accessory bag. Then I farmed sugarcane, netherworts and mushrooms for a couple of minutes so I can craft both the speed and potion affinity artifacts and also the night vision charm. While I was still in the garden I also changed the garden skin I was currently using and shot the magma bolt 200 times. The last achievements I got before going for another hard one were the ones for giving gifts. You can get a total of 6 achievements for giving gifts to 100 unique players and for giving a thousand gifts in total. But since I have 4 members that helped support this channel I gave away 4000 gifts. And for everyone that becomes a member after this video I will give away another thousand gifts. Bro, who cares? Wanna do some slayers? You can talk to Maddox who will give you a quest that spawns a boss after you kill a number of zombies. If you defeat the boss you can then come back and get a few hundred slayer xp. After hours of killing zombies I was only one fifth of the way there but the remaining 400,000 slayer xp would be a lot faster since I finally reached combat level 25 allowing me to do tier 5 bosses which gave 3 times more xp. And after another 5 hours of killing zombies I finally got 500,000 slayer xp. Getting that achievement also meant that I got a high enough combat level to access the crimson Isles. It's an endgame island where even the easiest mobs have millions of health and can kill you in seconds. I was nowhere near ready for this island, but I still went to the dojo. There's a total of 7 different challenges you are required to complete while reaching the highest rank to redeem the black belt. The first challenges are very easy. In the test of force you need to knock the zombies into lava, which will give you 10, 20 or 30 points depending on the type of zombie. You can easily get a thousand points on this one if you just focus on the zombies that give you the highest points. Yes, a thousand! The test of archery is so easy that with just a few minutes of practice you can get over 500 points above the highest rank. The test of tenacity has up to 4 gas shooting at you at all times and all you need to do is avoid their projectiles. The first half is so easy that you can stand still and get 500 points, but near the end when nearly all of your platform is destroyed you need to do a lot of parkour to stay alive. The last easy one is the test of discipline. You are given 4 swords and your job is to hit the zombie with the corresponding helmet. If you did well in the previous challenges you would only need to get about 2.5 thousand score in the remaining 3, but they are so incredibly hard that it will take you hours to get the rest. Test of stamina has a wall of blocks moving towards you while your job is to either jump or walk through the gaps. The test of swiftness will spawn you above lava on a wool block that will quickly disappear from under your feet, but you can spawn new blocks by walking on the wall that has spawned most recently. For the test of control all you need to do is follow the wither skeleton with your mouse. Those challenges aren't hard by themselves but what makes them impossible are the laggy servers. What the fuck was that? What the fuck am I supposed to do there? Fuck man lag back. Dude this is impossible. How am I supposed to know what I'm supposed to do? <laughs> nice lag, nice lag. Nice lag. <laughs> What am I supposed to do? What, what am I supposed to do here? Am I supposed to predict where the fucking next block is going to be? What am I supposed to do? How? How? I've been here for 8 hours. You will have tens of times where you spend 2 minutes on a challenge and either you get lagged back or the next jump is impossible. And don't get me started on the test of control. I was playing on 200 things so not only did I have attempts ruined solely because of lag, I would also have to predict the moves of the skeleton a full second ahead. Not only that, all the abilities of the skeleton are fully random so it's not uncommon for him to spawn one destruction after another or just turn like 7 times in a second. But well. Despite all of that, I still got the black belt. Boom, 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 boom. Yes! In the Crimson Isles, there's also a unique fishing system where you have a chance to fish up trophy fish with the rarity ranging from bronze, silver, gold to even diamond. There's a total of 18 different trophy fish and each of them has some weird thing you need to do to even have a chance to fish them up. It takes a total of 400 hours to get all of them in the diamond rarity, but luckily for me all I had to do was catching one of each fish while getting only one of them in the golden rarity. Easy right? Well, you can get a bunch of the 
trophy fish simply by fishing in specific lava pools. All of those fish, alongside a couple of others that you can get by doing some weird things like fishing from a couple of blocks above or having high enough intelligence, only took about an hour. It would be a very quick achievement if not for one fish. Unless you already have a high fishing level, you will be stuck with very low fishing speed. A single catch will take you more than 10 seconds and to even have a 10% chance of catching the obfuscated fish, you need to use the obfuscated bait which halves your fishing speed. Once you get the trophy fish, you need to use the fish itself as bait for another 10% chance to catch the second version. Once you get that one, again, you need to use the fish itself to catch the third version. I increased my fishing speed by buying different high tier enchants and even got the best bet for fishing speed that costed tens of millions of coins. That was a massive help, but it still took me so long that not only did I get the golden rarity trophy fish, but I also got not one, but two diamond rarity trophy fish that each have a 0.2% chance. Bro, I got another diamond, I'm fishing 18, I don't want them. I also got two achievements for getting a rare treasure while fishing and using the blessed enchant to double my fishing loot. And after a total of 10 hours of fishing, I finally got the third version of the obfuscated fish. I got it, yes, this took way longer than I should. To celebrate that, I immediately went to the viking, but instead of cooking a regular fish for him, I cooked the obfuscated fish. But I still had a long while before I could reach fishing 25. Because of my low secretary chance, I was only catching regular fish, which didn't give me much XP at all. I bought sponge armor and replaced my pet with an ammonite to get as many secretaries as possible, but even that didn't help a lot. Killing squids or water walkers will only give you about 100 fishing XP, but if you get lucky and fish up a sea emperor, you can even get thousands. The issue was that I couldn't fish up any sea emperors or any high level secretor for that matter because of my low fishing level. So instead, I found Rachi who has a completely maxed out fishing setup and I just killed the sea creatures he fished up. However, Admus made it so that if you kill a sea creature that was fished up by someone else, you won't get the XP. The one thing that they overlooked were the magma slugs. If you kill it, you won't get any XP, but it will split itself into three smaller slugs. And if you kill all of them, you will get 1.3 thousand XP. This made fishing 25 a cakewalk, and since I was killing endgame sea creatures, I got an achievement for killing a sea creature that spawns above level 20. Reaching level 25 also allowed me to fish up rare sea creatures exclusive to the Winter Island, like a Grinch or a Yeti. I also killed a squid with an ink wand and a prismarine blade and fished using both the farmer's rod and the rod of legends. While I was already on the Winter Island, I also collected 20 gifts that were scattered all over the place. When the other events were active, I made sure to kill the Halloween boss exclusive to the event and buy a limited time pet from Marengo. Next I did a couple of easy achievements, like getting Alchemy 25, crafting both a saddle and a greater backpack, buying a day saver to place in my garden and getting launched by the volcano. And then it was time to go for another hard achievement. Hi, nice to meet you. Could you help me find my dear Romeo? By talking to Juliet, you can begin a quest that requires you to find Romeo all across the Skybook Islands. I'm trying to find gold, but I can only find sand and stone here. Could you find some gold for me, please? After giving him the gold, he will then ask you to bring him some roses so he can make a gift for Juliet. Uh, yellow rock? What's the point of that? Here. You can keep it. And then instead of just bringing her on a date, he spends his time making fake emerald altars, brewing soups made out of 5,000 mushrooms, or literally flying to the moon using a rabbit potion. Next I had to visit Romeo and the gold mines and give him an enchanted lava bucket and then go to his free house with over a thousand intelligence so I can solve a Rubik's cube for him. Romeo solved this cube? That's unbelievable! No, really, I don't believe it at all. Romeo went to meditate at his retreat. It's the smallest house in Skyblock. I need your help to win Juliet back. My plan is to assemble the greatest bouquet ever. I need a ridiculous amount of flowers. But this time, instead of just asking for a couple of roses, he needs something much more valuable. Once every three days, in the middle of the woods, a mysterious figure will appear. If you manage to talk to him, you will be taken to an underground auction where you can find all sorts of items ranging from talismans worth hundreds of millions to some of the most powerful enchants in the game. But if you wait until the end of the auction, you will have a chance to buy a minion that will only produce flowers. I went to the auction several times, but I couldn't even buy it since people were bidding 
tens of millions more than it was actually worth it. After going to the dark auction 5 times, I finally managed to buy the flower minion for 30 million coins, which also gave me an achievement for participating in the dark auction. That's exquisite! With this, I can get enough flowers to win Juliet back! Another gift from Romeo! It's decided. We're making it official. To attend the wedding, I needed a tuxedo, so I bought the most expensive one and got both the achievements for wearing a tuxedo worth 75 million coins and for completing the Romeo and Juliet quest. And right after that, I started the royal conversation. In the Dwarven Mines, you can find and talk to an NPC who will beg you to leave his room. But if you ignore everything he says, he will keep talking to you for about an hour. If you sit through all of that, he will then turn into a sheep and begin counting down from 5,000, which takes 7 hours to complete. Yay, royal conversation, this only took like 6 hours. Next I went to the museum. I ended up donating 100 items, which increased my museum value to just above 100 million, allowing me to get an achievement for using the hex. Also made sure to convert a normal item into a dungeon item and wear full divan armor, which I then used to mine around the crystal hollows for about an hour, before I found a very rare structure needed to complete another secret achievement. Speaking of secret achievements, did you know that you can get another one by feeding a rare drop from a high level sea creature to an ordinary cow? Well now you know. While already in the barn, I also killed a pig using a sword made out of 1.2 million pork chops and killed 3 different mobs with a single shot from a runan's bow. Next I crafted 5 remote islands to get the achievements for placing the pond island and 5 remote islands in total. I also realized that I would need to go back to fishing since I had nowhere near enough collection for the sea creature artifact, but luckily I just had to obtain it, so all I needed to do was buy the artifact and pick it up from the ground. It was the opposite situation for the bait ring, but for Unfortunately, I already had the collection for it, so I just needed to buy the materials and craft it. The next time I went to the end island, I was approached by someone who really wanted to race with me. My best time is pretty fast. You probably will never beat me, but you can try. If you finish in under three minutes, I'll reward you for it. Three minutes? I finished in less than 42 seconds on the first try. Next I went down to the dragon layer, where I got the achievements for killing the Enstone Protector, surviving a blast from the unstable dragon and two for killing a superior dragon. And for the last one, I just needed to find a secret room at the side of the island. After that, I bought both a Midas sword and a Midas jewel, so I can combine them and get a gilded Midas sword, which I then minutes later replaced with a leaping sword to get a kill with its ability. And for the next one, I had to visit the gravel mine and get enough gravel collection so that I can brew 3 potion, agility, critical 3 and regeneration 8. I then decided to finally take a look at the dungeons. Throughout this entire challenge I have been gradually upgrading my setup, so at this point I had both a Mida staff and a Glacial side. The setup was barely good enough to pretend I was actually doing something while getting carried. My goal was reaching class level 15, and while doing that I got a chain of achievements for reaching an exploration score of 95, which gave me an S plus score at the end of the dungeon, which allowed allowed me to open up an obsidian chest. I also made sure to kill a death mite, and after reaching class level 15, I got a couple of easy achievements for killing a fairy while being a ghost, beating a dungeon without anyone dying, and killing the dungeon boss in under 4 minutes. To complete the dungeon achievement, I had to find a thousand secrets, and while doing that, I found some rare rooms and got achievements for buying a tier 6 book from Tobioka and for hallucinating after clicking the mushroom. Don't take drugs, kids. Also found 10 secrets in one dungeon run using inflatable gem and a couple of hours of grinding later, I was finally done with dungeons. Right after that, I went back to the Crimson Isles. There's a lot of quests you can do there, but you can begin the most important one by talking to Elle. After giving her all of the items, you will be presented with a choice. So, which faction do you choose? I chose the Barbarian faction, because that's the only place where I could complete one of the achievements, but for that, I needed to get accepted first. With Elle's help, I found a corrupted monster, which actually turned out to be the chief's son. Thank you for saving my rascal of a son. I welcome you both to the barbarian faction. If you betray us, you'll die. I then started gaining reputation by doing odd jobs, like sneaking around the mages faction to steal their research plans or killing the magma boss. But eventually, I got asked to do this. What I need the most right now is a heavy pearl. If you bring one to me, I'll reward you handsomely. To get a heavy pearl, you need to let the matriarch eat you alive. Not only did I have to get all of the heavy pearls and escape, I also needed to do that without taking any damage. It was only after crafting the feather artifact to negate the damage from the drop at the very beginning that I was able to get the perfect matriarch. Only after bringing the heavy pearls back, I became trusted enough to take on Kudra.
First we needed to fetch up 6 supply chests and bring them to the center of the island, all while avoiding Kudra's tentacles that deal massive damage. After that you need to use all the supplies you've gathered to build a big ass crossbow. Kudra will try to stop you by slamming the crossbow with its tentacles or summoning mobs that will try to reset your progress. If you manage to fully build the crossbow, you then need to fish up another 4 fuel blocks and bring them to the crossbow. And only then you can load up the crossbow and take a shot at Kudra. Next I went back to the Barbarian faction and located a villager who I needed to pay 1 million coins to get access to the fairy soul in his house. Also made sure to fuse 2 items so I can increase their attributes and after that I went to the smoldering tomb with a grapple shot. You can use it to have an easier time killing blazes, but all I needed to do was grapple 5 blazes at once. But while doing that, I found something very interesting. Welcome to my den. Why don't we make a deal? You bring me a delicious meal, one without any armor, and you will get a reward. Was I about to make a deal with an human eating spider? There are also 4 mini bosses that are scattered all across the Crimson Isles. I then went around and killed all 4 of them to get the achievement. I don't even think I did anything to help. But there is also one more secret boss. Every time you kill a mob, there is a very small chance for a vanquisher to spawn, but I got really lucky and found them really quickly. Well that was easy. And for the last achievement on the Crimson Isles, I bought the Abathon. Next I reached 500 unique minion upgrades with also getting another achievement for crafting a tier 11 minion. After that I needed to kill a ghost, but since they deal massive damage, I died almost instantly. To solve that I got the Phantom Rod, since that's the only ranged weapon in the whole game that works on ghosts. Next I perfectly completed all of Melody's songs that are required to even attempt playing the hardest song in the game. I mean 50% but I still got the achievement. And then I got 2 achievements for getting 20 unique pets and a total of 100 pet score. And then I went to the Crystal Hollows for the last time. I had to complete 25 nucleus runs and to do that I needed to get all 5 of the crystals and place them in their statues. And only then I could collect my loot. But collecting 125 different crystals wasn't exactly a cakewalk. To get the jade crystal in the mines of Divan you need to use the metal detector to find the buried treasure which if you are lucky can give you tools that you then need to bring back to the keepers. I needed to find a total of a hundred different tools so I very quickly went past the achievement for finding a hundred and fifty treasure chests. For the amethyst crystal you need to complete a parkour inside of the jungle temple and to get the amber crystal you need to trick the guards protecting it by using the stench given to you by the king of goblins. The topaz crystal is guarded by and can only be obtained after killing him. And to unlock the gates to the sapphire crystal, you need to give all of the robotron parts to the guard. And boom. Hey. Also spawned a rare golden goblin by throwing goblin eggs and then did that a hundred times over. Doing really everything in this video also gave me some skyblock XP and if you count everything up it will get me to skyblock level 98. But there is still one more thing I have not been telling you about. Hello. You might be wondering, okay, that's too cringe. I can do that like an actual script. <laughs> <laughs> I got you here to show you something. For the last like two months, I want to say, I've been collecting every single achievement in Hypixel Skyblock. Here's a what museum I built with every single achievement what? and every single thing I did. What is textbook? Like, is crafting the textbook an achievement? Yeah, you have to put it on the pad. I had to do 286 achievements. You know what's, what's the best part? <laughs> Those aren't even the hard ones. Yeah. Is there a G-Drag egg in here? Come, I have that come one. Come to the end of the hall. Here you can see a rooms I specially designed with hard achievements oh in mind. Okay, death mine doesn't seem that bad. The Slayer XP is pretty long. The commissions are okay. Commissions and visitors was like 70 hours by themselves. On a fresh profile, this stuff is all very difficult for sure. Especially, did you actually get a G-Drag? I did actually get a G-Drag. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I have one of those. I have one of those. <laughs> black belt. That was... Oh my god. I hated getting the black belt. Melody's free, bro. Why is this here? Why is this here? I've done it three times. I've done it three times. I've done, I've done it three times. Okay, there's also another surprise. Do you have a profile slot open? I do. Why? Because I've completed every single achievement, apart from one, which I need your help. It's to create a new co-op. Oh, okay. So I don't really have a slot open, so I'll just delete this profile. I am on a new island and co-op add 
Modern Soldier. I'm here. I'm finally free. <laughs> I did every <laughs> single achievement. Finally, yeah. <laughs> This took like 270 hours. <laughs> Subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> okay. <laughs>